picture this. A total population of over 200 million citizens, a GDP estimated at nearly $500 billion by the end of 2023, a workforce filled with millions of highly industrious, willing-to-work citizens, and a nation blessed with a vast array of natural resources and materials that would be the envy of almost any country in the world. On paper, the Nigerian economy has all the necessary qualities to be one of the top 10, or at least the top 20 economies in the world. But in reality, the situation within the country could not be any different. A continuous fall in the standard of living, a poverty population of just over 70 million people, and a rise in the cost of living have seen the lifestyle of the citizens of the country plummet to an almost depressing state. But how on earth has the nation that was once dubbed as the giant of Africa become a mere shadow of herself? Hello again, and welcome to another video where we'll be taking a brief investigation into the economic situation of Africa's most populous nation and how she could be very well descending into a state of peril. To fully understand the magnitude of just how far Nigeria has fallen and continues to fall into despair, we'll begin with a brief detour back to the supposed pinnacle of Nigeria's economy. Following the discovery of oil in the late 1960s and the eventual oil boom in the 1970s, Nigeria enjoyed arguably her best period since independence up until now. During this period, there was a vast increase in infrastructural facilities around the country and an increase in public investment in all areas of the country. This was also characterized as the only period in history where the Nigerian Naira was stronger than the US dollar and almost on par with the British pound. During this era, Nigeria wasn't just the fastest growing economy in Africa, but one of the fastest growing in the world. In fact, Nigeria was the seventh largest producer of oil and was the major supplier of crude oil to many of the world's developing and developed countries, including the United States. This meant that the revenue accruing to the federal government as of 1975 was over 3 billion Naira. This period was also characterized by increased investment in tertiary education, with 12 federal universities being established during that time. It all seemed like Nigeria was on track to become one of the world's most productive countries. But fast forward about 50 years later, and the nation has never been farther away from achieving such global acclaim. 2023 came with a lot of hope for the Nigerian populace. For the first time in a long time, many believed in a man and his ability to transform the fortunes of a slowly dying nation. They rallied behind him en masse, and for the first time ever, the youth showed up in numbers to vote for their preferred candidate in the hope of a new Nigeria. But as many feared, the exact opposite happened. The promise of a free and fair electoral process was nothing but a lie. And with the lie came the death of the last bit of hope many Nigerians had for a new nation. Months after the facade that was the election, the country has suffered further setback. The price of fuel, which once was around the 190 Naira mark for a liter, has more than tripled to over 620 Naira per liter. School fees for many tertiary institutions have more than quadrupled within that time frame as well as the drastic rise in the inflation rate that has sent many Nigerians into a state of abject poverty, with over 133 million citizens currently living below the global poverty line of $2 per day. The economy that once promised world domination on all fronts is barely hanging on by a thread, and it begs the most pressing question of all, how on earth do we get here? Given the drastic contrast in the two economies we have discussed so far, you would be forgiven for thinking that they were two entirely different countries. Or, at the very least, the 2023 economy came decades before the 70s. But the unfortunate reality is that Nigeria has regressed beyond belief and in all honesty, the reasons for this are glaring to see. Topping the list would without a doubt have to be the high rate of corruption that has permeated all levels of government in the country. This is further emphasized when you take into account a 2012 report that estimated that Nigeria has lost over $400 billion to corruption since its independence, a figure that would have most likely grown since then. Over and over again, we have seen reports of many political office holders, both past and present, that have been indicted for one form of corruption or the other. But how many of them have really faced appropriate punishment? 
Cases of palliatives being kept hidden by persons in positions of power during the pandemic were a norm with little to no repercussions whatsoever. Reports of animals absconding with government funds from government offices were also rampant at some point in time, with almost no investigation into the farce of such claims. And how about the former Minister of Petroleum in Nigeria, Dizani Alison Madweke, who has two pending arrest warrants from her time in office after the United States Justice Department reportedly uncovered over $53 million that was embezzled during her regime. Yet she roams the streets free from the hands of justice. And the sad truth is that all these figures hardly touch the surface of what has been siphoned by the political elite. Cases like this have been largely responsible for sending the once promising economy of Nigeria into her current state. Another major drain that has seen Nigeria's economy plummet beyond saving is the massive insecurity rate. From the high rate of cybercrime and armed robbery in the South, to the ever-present terrorist groups in the North, insecurity in Nigeria has played a major role in the decline of her economy, as well as the living standards of her citizens. Due to its rampant attacks in the North, Boko Haram rendered many individuals without jobs and means of livelihood with their terrorist attacks on various institutions and marketplaces. The same effect case could also be made for the South, as the high rate of insecurity has driven away potential foreign investors from the country. This, in turn, has led to a drop in the overall productivity of the country, thereby reducing the available products for export, and as a consequence causing the Naira to grow weaker with each passing day. With decades of this level of insecurity and crime rate, it should come as no surprise that the Nigerian economic and political situation is at the level it is today. In addition to the high rate of corruption and insecurity level that has plagued the country for over 50 years, there is also the failing industrial sector, and this has perhaps had the biggest impact on the economy's decline. Following the oil boom in the 1970s, Nigeria was experiencing an accumulated stream of income like never before. But instead of using such revenue to further diversify the economy and her production base, focus was mainly placed on high cost and low yield investment projects. And to little surprise, 50 years later, nothing has changed. For a country blessed with the amount of natural and human resources like Nigeria is, the nation has somehow contrived to be almost ineffective in her productive capacity, either through bad roads, unstable power supply, insecurity, or corruption. Many production companies have been operating well below optimal capacity, and as such, Nigeria's exports continue to be considerably less than her imports. And until this particular aspect of Nigeria can change, the worst might still be yet to come. So that brings an end to our video for today, folks. 50 odd years later from the promise of the 1970s, the citizens of Nigeria have arguably never known a harder time. The rising costs of fuel, education, food, and basically all necessities have dragged more and more Nigerians into the poverty cycle, with the number of persons that live below $2 a day now at an all-time high. And judging by the economic policies of the leaders so far, the average Nigerian would be wise to prepare for the worst. But at the end of the day, Nigeria still remains a home to millions of people and still houses a wide range of natural and human resources. And with the right leaders at the helm, Nigerians might very well see the country that they have always dreamt of. In the meantime, from me and the rest of the team, it's goodbye for now. And make sure to click that like and subscribe button. See you soon.